California, we present the Bob Hope Show with our special guest, Robert Montgomery. And now, here is Bob Hope. We're here at Van Nuys, California, doing a benefit for the War Memorial Park. Van Nuys, that's a small group of houses surrounded by Andy Devine. <laughs> I... I hear Andy Devine has been having quite a bit of trouble as mayor of Van Nuys. When he sits down in the city hall, his stomach overlaps into Sherman Oaks. The mayor sent me a personal invitation to come here. He said it would be great advertising and help business. I found out after I got here, he's a lemon grower. <laughs> and this is a great citrus country out here, and the smog really confuses things. The other day, one farmer squeezed four orange trees dry before he found out he wasn't milking his cow. <laughs> and there are airports all over San Fernando Valley, and no one sweeps his porch here. They just wait for the jet planes to go by. <laughs> These new jet planes really take off fast. Three times last week, the Van Nuys City Hall had to hitchhike back from Kansas City. <laughs> and they're really doing a lot of building out here. I, I went through one of the model homes. It was a typical, ca typical California bungalow. I could tell by the shower it had three spigots, hot, cold, and orange juice. <laughs> and they really put up those houses in a hurry. They built one so fast, it was all finished, and the termites were still in their pajamas. <laughs> I saw one place they put up so fast even Kilroy hadn't been there. And then I found out why. Richard wouldn't let him in. But it's a very busy metropolis, Van Nuys, and California is really growing. Yes, sir, the out-of-state cars are bringing people in faster than the California cars are killing them all. California's really growing fast. So many people from other states are coming out here these days that deep in the heart of Texas is now four miles west of Pasadena.
gentlemen, I'd like you to meet our guest vocalist, one of England's outstanding musical picture stars and a great favorite of the American servicemen over there during the war. Now here in Hollywood for radio and pictures, lovely and charming Miss Beryl Davis, ladies and gentlemen. Is it a sin? Is it a crime? Loving you, dear, like I do. If it's a crime, then I'm guilty. Guilty of loving you. Maybe I'm wrong. Miss Beryl Davis, England's own, assisted by Desi Arnaz, San Fernando's reject. Say, I want to tell you, <laughs> that, that was wonderful, Beryl. Really charming, shantoosing. Uh, Beryl, have you seen much of our town yet? Oh, yes, Bob, and after London, your Hollywood traffic amazes me. Well, I don't know why we drive on the same side of the street as you do. <laughs> oh, uh... How do our Hollywood drivers compare with those over in England? Oh, English drivers are much more sporting, Bob. More sporting? How do you figure? Well, before they hit a pedestrian, they always shout, Tally ho! <laughs> yeah, and over here, all the yellers lay down, Joe. You're scratching my fender. <laughs> I want to visit Mexico while I'm here, Bob. Mexico? Uh-huh. How do you get to Mexico from here? Well, you can take a train. That's the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe line. Well, how about flying? Oh, sure. That's the Artie Lithian van line. <laughs> Uh, but you don't have to go to Mexico for natural beauties, Beryl. Right here we have... Oh, well, Miss Beryl May! Miss Vera May, the gal with Lassie's chassis. Well, Mr. Hope, the guy with Tigger's figure. <laughs> Who's the pretty girl, Mr. Holmes? Oh, Miss Vague, meet Beryl Davis. She's just come over from England. Oh, how do you do? Pip, pip, high tea at low tide and all that. Wait a minute. Miss Vague, I said England, not Lower Slobovia. Uh, oh, don't pay any attention to trout now. Uh, tell me, uh, do you happen to know any nice... Uh, uh, do you know any nice English gentlemen here you could introduce me to, Miss Davis? Oh, Miss Vague, the Englishmen I know are so reserved. You wouldn't like them. They're all very backward. Backward? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, who cares? I've got a bit of pseudo baker in me, too. <laughs> Englishmen don't interest me at all. Well, what's wrong with the Englishmen, Miss Bay? Uh, with goodness, you can never tell whether they're winking at you or just trying to get a tighter grip on their monocle. <laughs> well, just what type of man do you go for, Miss Bay? Uh, uh, are there different types? <laughs> Why, certainly, Miss Vague, the kinds you can't catch and the older type. Uh, don't be silly. I wouldn't think of chasing your groups, Mr. Hull. 
Now, wait a minute. Miss Vague, you live out here in the San Fernando Valley, don't you? Oh, yes, and I think branch life is wonderful. I really love to plant things. It keeps me young. It keeps you young. What do you plant, your birth certificate? (laughs) (laughs) Ah, you dear moist-eared youth here. Get mad at you here right in front of all my neighbors. Oh, uh, just where do you live, Miss Vane? In Woodland Hill. Oh, out there near Ross Neely, huh? Yes, oh, that's right. right. In, in fact, not so long ago, I ran for mayor out there. Oh, did you catch him? <laughs> you you shouldn't tease me about anything so serious, Mr. Hope. I won the election, and it's really an important job being mayor. Mayorette. F. 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 Mr. Hope, are you talking baby talk or is the hot air in your head leaking out again? <laughs> so you really live out here in the valley, Miss Vane? Oh, yes, I do, and I'm really getting rustic. I noticed. Have you tried three in one oil? <laughs> Ooh, if I could only get a nutcracker around that walnut head of yours, <laughs> I'd give Dick Tracy a new character to chase. <laughs> Never mind. Say, now that you're the mayor, uh, what have you done for Woodland Hills besides frighten the male populace? Uh, well, uh, right now I'm helping to build a new post office. Well, I knew you'd get your mail one way or another. I knew. Excuse me. I stepped on it, didn't you? Know? <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a messy one. I really am. Um... Well, uh, anyway, I, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Thank you very much. I really would like to have you see the construction work of the post office, Mr. Hope. Come on, I'll take you down. All right. Dad, I wish I had a hammer. I'm getting a headache. <laughs> Professor Colonna, there he is. How are you, Professor? I'm fine. Hey, just a minute, Hope. I, I've got to put these two boards together. It's really very easy, you know. Well, Professor, why do you have to pound so much? No nails. you describe the layout of this post office for Mr. Holt? Very well. There's the first floor, then the second floor, then the garage, and then the uh, third uh, floor. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. The garage between the second and third floor? That's ridiculous. Haven't been driving out here long, have you? <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'd better rip off the scaffolding. Uh, professor, Professor, why are you ripping it off with your fingers? Why don't you have a crowbar? Beg pardon? Why don't you have a crowbar? Oh, we don't need one. The crows around here never touch the stuff. Hold it. Tell me, uh, where were you when they were giving out brains? Well, don't you remember playing Jim Ramby with you? What is the professor? You have the sidewalks all poured. Yes, Miss Vague, and as long as you're the mayor, don't you think you should put your footprints in the cement? Uh, are you sure the cement's all right, though? Oh, absolutely. Nothing but pure cement and sand. Pure cement and sand. Uh, all right, all right. I'll step on it. You I go. <laughs> Forgot to mention it was quicksand. <laughs> Finest voices in radio, the Capitol record man, Mr. Clark Dennis. I'll close my eyes to everyone but you, and when I do, I'll see you standing there.
Che If you're not there You carry lovely day And through the years Those moments Where we're apart I'll close my eyes And Thank you very much, Desi Arnaz. I'll be after the air down Baldwin to see you over the weekend. in a while, someone in the motion picture business has the courage to introduce a new technique. And tonight we welcome back one of our favorite guests, a wonderful actor who in his latest picture also took over the director's reins and inaugurated the camera technique you'll still be talking about this time next year. Here he is, naval veteran, star and director of MGM's Lady in the Lake, Mr. Robert Montgomery, ladies and gentlemen. Montgomery, it's been a year since you were on the program last, but I knew you'd be back after that nice check I gave you. Yes, Bob, I'm back. Here's the check. Sign it. <laughs> you got a pen that writes under rubber? Say, uh, we ought to do something. Bob, we ought to do something about these names. If I keep calling you Bob, your fans might get confused and think you're me. Oh, that's okay. I like to live dangerously. <laughs> You talk like that and you'll get your wish. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Just feel that bicep, brother. There, feel that knot. Yeah, what an interesting way to take up slack. <laughs> Come on, feel my bicep when I tense it now. There. Hard, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. But why is it under your arm? <laughs> How do you like that? My man put it on wrong this morning. But Robert M., tell us about your new picture, Lady in the Lake. What's the new technique you use? I have great hopes for this idea, Bob. Everything is shown through the eyes of the hero and the audience. We use the camera as the hero in most of the pictures. Yeah, and I hear when you kiss your leading lady, Audrey Totter, her lips come towards the camera, and it seems as if she's kissing the audience. That's right. It looks so real when we previewed the picture, the ushers caught a guy climbing up on the screen, screen and trying to kiss her back. Uh, I was not. My bubblegum slipped, and I was just going after it. But, Robert, let's say we play a couple of private detectives and do our own little one-wheeler on the Lady in the Lake. Fine. Where will we find the lake? 
You native son, you set the scene. <laughs> okay, Bob, the lady in the lake, or the case of the waterlogged girdle. <laughs> As our story opens, we find a car speeding along a lonely road. In the car are two black derby hats. And under those derby hats sit the two most dreaded private eyes in the business. <laughs> private detectives, Transom Hope, and Keyhole Montgomery. <laughs> they speak. Hey, Dead Eye. What is it, Red Eye? Where's the antifreeze? <laughs> Where's the antifreeze? Here it is. Shall I stop the car? No, I can drink it okay. <laughs> Hey, Lefty. Yeah. My back itches. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we are really tough, Red Eye. That time they made the bullet hole in your head, did you ever go to a doctor? Nah. Look. Gee, what a clever idea, keeping your fountain pen in there. <laughs> yeah, but last week it leaked and my eyes turned blue. Radio, Dead Eye. Let's see what's doing on the police call. Okay. Calling all cars on the north side. Calling all cars on the north side. Stand by for a bulletin. Calling all cars on the south side. You all stand by, too. <laughs> Calling all cars. Go to the corner of Spruce and Juice. All cars in the city go full speed to the corner of Spruce and Juice. <laughs> Gonna be a big accident, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, man. This is Sergeant Brush Bush Colonna of Homicide, Suicide, and Insecticide. Listen, be on the lookout for one Herman Pills. If seen, shoot to kill. He wrote, Open the Door, Richard. <laughs> Listen, car 47. Go to corner of Maine and Sprain. Put a ticket on Green Buick, license 806221. It's lights are on, the engine is running, the horn is blowing, and it's parked on the traffic cop's foot. <laughs> ah, here's something that may interest you. Call me all cars. What a different park at once. <laughs> As if you weren't there already. <laughs> Go to Griffin Park and hurry. There's a lady in the lake. Let's go, Red Eye. Okay, Red Eye. Boy, this hot rod really moves. How fast are we going now? I can't tell. The needle is pointing to my beneficiary. <laughs> okay, Dead Eye. Hold it, Red Eye. We're coming to a red light. I'll go right through. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me the red light was on the back of a truck? <laughs> Here we are, Red Eye. Here's Griffith Park. Did I stop too quick? No, I always wear my shorts around my neck. <laughs> are you hey. sure we're in Griffith Park? What's that? Are you sure we're in Griffith Park? I don't know. I'll ask that couple sitting over there in the dark in a parked car. Hey! <laughs> I guess you've all been there, huh? <laughs> you look familiar. Go ahead. It's all... You know, so far, this is nothing like the picture I made for MGM. You should be thankful. Hey, there's the lake, and there's the lady in the lake. Come on. <laughs> Don't worry, we're coming. We'll save you. Thank goodness that second voice sounded like a man. <laughs> It's Miss Vague. Come on, Deadeye. We've got to get Miss Vague out of the lake. It's too late. Look, there's an octopus out there, and it's grabbing Miss Vague. An octopus? <laughs> oh, gee. Look, that octopus, that terrible crushing, that horrible squeezing. Let's swim out, Deadeye. Yeah, the octopus is crushing us. <laughs> okay, Miss Vague, don't worry about the octopus. Don't worry. We're here. We're here. How do you like that? Everywhere you go, chaperones. <laughs> Robert Montgomery, we're going to rush over and see that picture lady in the lake. And thanks to Beryl Davis. It was a pleasure meeting you. Hope you enjoy yourselves here. And I also want to thank Clark Dennis, quite a singer.
It's really been a pleasure to do this war memorial show out here in Van Nuys, folks. And I hope you get a lot of the necessary to commemorate the fine service guards in this area. Yes, sir, it's nice to be broadcasting from this auditorium after putting on our program in Ken Murray's El Capitan Theater. You know, Murray has been running that stale stage show there so long, one of the seats in the balcony has a sign on it saying, George Washington slept here. <laughs> and another thing I want to tell you, if there's ever a thing that I... Well, Ken Murray! Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on, sickle snout. I'm here for the best. Well, <laughs> what rent money? I class up that barn of yours with all those prestige audiences I bring uh, in there. Some prestige audience. 50 relatives and a scout from Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> you ought to pay me for using that shooting gallery. Listen, never mind the alibis, Hope. Your radio show cost me a lot of dough. How do you mean? After each broadcast, I have to fumigate the theater. <laughs> Will you take that smudge pot out of my face, please? <laughs> you don't have to worry about fuming getting that cigar you're smoking. You'll kill anything. I don't know. You're still here. You're... <laughs> now, listen, Murray, you can't push me around. No, that's a job for a bulldozer. <laughs> Do you really want your money, or did you just come out here to ham it up? Oh, look who's talking about ham. Look, look who's talking about him. Every time you pass a delicatessen store, the mustard jar tips its lid. Yeah, well, look.